Yo, Hello. what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you are new. It is unfortunately our final vlog and final day here in Italy as tomorrow we head off to our next destination which is Morocco. Yeah, but we couldn't finish this trip off without heading over to the Vatican and checking out what's there. Yeah, like the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> and we've got that booked for later this afternoon. But in the meantime, we're gonna go check out some sites. And so we hope you enjoy following along with us for this last vlog here in Italy. So where we started this day at, at Ponte Umberto, we had a brisk walk along the river Tiber, which yeah. was very nice. Except there were a lot of sand flies. But they didn't bite us, so it's okay. <laughs> and we've reached another point over here, which is Ponte San Angelo, as well as Castel San Angelo, which is a very significant site because it was Emperor Hadrian's mausoleum, as well as a fortress. Pope residence, prison, and now it's current prison day form, it's a museum. And you can actually go up to the top of it, which is really cool, but we might have to save that for another visit. Yeah, I think so. There's a couple of cool bridges along this uh, river Tiber, so we might have one more to go check out. Yeah. Just a couple meters down, we've got another bridge behind me, which is Ponte Vittorio Emanuele II, named after Italy's first king. So you can see it's got three arches and then the bronze angels at the start and at the end of the bridge, as well as four groups of marble statues, each which are supposed to depict a virtue of the king. pizza was the way to go yeah. and we found a small store over here called Shala, the original street food. Okay, so I have gone the classic margarita pizza, look at that. This is Peter's favourite pizza. Give it a fold, give it a bite. Mm. Um. No matter how many of these I have, I can't get enough of it, it's so <laughs> delicious. Mm. Cheesy. The base is fantastic, it's got a little bit of crisp to it. <coughs> but the main thing that I love about these margarita pizzas here in Italy is the tomato flavoring in there. It is divine. I thought because I wasn't that hungry that I could just steal like a piece from Peter's one. He was like, no, I need to get my own pizza. <laughs> So I've got the Montanara and I was sold because I could see all the mushrooms on it. With that cheese and the tomato base, the oregano that's sprinkled on. It looks amazing, smells really good. I'm gonna go for this piece here. Check that out. Nice. Mmm, smells so good. It does not disappoint. It's delicious. Got that yummy cheese, which isn't that salty or that strong of flavor. But then you also have the mushrooms, which are nice and earthy, together with that little oregano and the tomato. Yeah, definitely a great combo, this one. Man, we had to really speed eat through yes, those pizzas because we, <laughs> we needed to make it here in time for our guided tour. It's about a 12 minute walk from the pizza place. Yeah. And Yen and I tried to get our own tickets for the Vatican, but they're incredibly difficult to source. So instead we booked a guide through Get Your Guide and it cost us 111 New Zealand dollars each. So it's gonna come included with a two and a half hour guided tour of St. Peter's Basilica, the Sistine Chapel, as well as the Vatican Museum. And you're also allowed to just uh, walk around the three hours later on yourself. We've just checked in, good to go. Very excited for this. Yes. Plus we were actually early by a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would it be people to join us? We have made 
made it inside the Vatican City, which is a city-state and also the smallest country in the world. How cool oh, is that? Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> yeah, for a moment we were in Rome, Italy, and then all of a sudden, new country, Vatican. <laughs> it's got a population of less than a thousand people. And today we're going to get to check out the Vatican Museums. And of course, there's also the Sistine Chapel that's there. Unfortunately, you can't take any photos or videos of the Sistine Chapel. Completely understandable, though. But the other parts, we are allowed. So hopefully we'll get to show you a lot of really cool stuff on the way. Also, one thing to note is that you do need to dress modestly here. So that means no um, showing your knees with shorts or skirts. And you've got to cover your shoulders as well. The Vatican Museums hold an immense amount of art that's truly impressive. It's made up of 54 galleries and is a real feast for the eyes. One of the most famous sculptures in the Vatican is right here of Lacoon and his sons, which depicts the mythological story of the Trojan priest who together with his sons were viciously attacked and strangled by sea serpents sent from Athena and Poseidon. The statue group was discovered in 1506 and famously inspired Renaissance artists like Michelangelo. As we made our way through, we passed another famous statue fragment the Belvedere Torso, ceilings covered in paintings and also spectacular mosaics adorning the floors, like this one of Athena. In the gallery of tapestries, we see the work of Raphael brought to life by master tapestry makers. Here's Julius Caesar's infamous stabbing. There are no taxes in the Vatican City and so it generates its revenue through museum admission fees, stamp and souvenir sales and contributions from its faithfuls. The gallery of maps with all the frescoes on the walls and ceilings looks so incredibly opulent. And it's shortly after this that you arrive at the Sistine Chapel. At the very start of our tour, our guide gave us information about the Sistine Chapel with the aid of these signboards outside. In 1508, 33-year-old Michelangelo was asked to decorate the Sistine Chapel's ceiling. He considered himself a sculptor rather than a painter though, so he reluctantly accepted the Pope's commission. He spent four years standing on scaffolding to complete the masterpiece, and more than 20 years later, he was commissioned again and this time painted the giant fresco, The Last Judgment. He sneakily hid a self-portrait of his face on St. Bartholomew's flayed skin. And in the creation of Adam, the background figures and shapes portrayed behind the figure of God appear to be an anatomically accurate picture of the human brain. We have just finished looking at the Sistine Chapel and unfortunately there's definitely no photos and videos allowed, it's strictly forbidden. But it was incredible to get to see in person. And we have now since broken away from our tour group because they're going to continue on to St. Peter's Basilica. Whereas we are going to try hunt down where Raphael's rooms are because there's a painting that we'd really like to see there, which is the School of Athens. We found Raphael's rooms. There are four separate rooms that comprise of his Raphael rooms. When you are going down, just before you go down to the Sistine Chapel, there is a turn on the left and that is how you get to these rooms. So if you want, because you don't get to actually talk or take videos and photos and all that sort of stuff in the Sistine Chapel, you could actually come to these rooms first before you head down to that way and don't miss it because sometimes it does get a bit overlooked with you know the amazingness of the Sistine Chapel and that's why we really wanted to come see this. The paintings, the frescoes, they are also just beautiful. The colors are so vibrant. And yeah, one of these rooms will hold that school of Athens painting and I think it might be either the next one or the one just after that. The School of Athens is a masterpiece. 
where in one painting, Raphael manages to visually represent a very intellectual concept. He uses figures and the grouping of the figures to basically lay out a complex lesson on the history of philosophy and the different beliefs that were developed by the great Greek philosophers. So you've got right in the center, Plato and his student Aristotle, with Plato pointing up to the sky and Aristotle reaching out almost to the viewer. There are also a number of other famous figures in there like Pythagoras and Socrates. You can even see Raphael himself peeking out from the corner at his own self-portrait where he's quite near Ptolemy, the astronomer. this way a bit, thank you. These rooms were all designed by Raphael and many of the masterpieces in here were done by him but some of them needed to be finished by his students because Raphael unexpectedly passed away at the age of 37. So young. Yeah, so young and we're really glad that we were able to check out these rooms but now it's time to head over to St. Peter's Basilica. The Basilica is a Renaissance church built in the 1500s and it replaced the first St. Peter's Basilica which was built under Emperor Constantine in the early 4th century. This place looks incredibly beautiful, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, this is absolutely magnificent. As you make your way through St. Peter's Square, eventually you reach St. Peter's Basilica, which is where we are at right now, and it is just amazing. How so much grand, detail, so elegant, yeah. how gigantic this place is. Even the light rays coming from the world's tallest dome shining down, it's just absolutely a sight to behold. In 1546, Michelangelo actually took over as the main architect of this building. He was about 71 years old at that time and unfortunately he never got to see his dome completed. And you can also see in here Michelangelo's Pieta, which is one of his most famous art pieces. Yeah, it's what skyrocketed him to fame. Yeah, St. Peter is believed to be buried underneath of this basilica. And man, I'm pretty impressed at how amazing this place is. It, is, it really is huge. Oh, another cool fact about the um, Pieta is mm. that it's the only piece he ever signed. Oh, right, yeah, Yen yeah. was telling me that um, it's actually signed on Mary's, Mary's session. Yeah. <laughs> you can't quite see it, it's a bit far, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's it from our entire Italy series. Yeah, we hope you guys have enjoyed following along with us. We had the most incredible time here in Italy, and also the Vatican. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a country where we can see ourselves visiting again, because there's still so much to explore. Exactly, there's a ton of cities that we'd love to go to, but definitely next time. However, the next country that we are going to go visit is Morocco and we are flying out tomorrow. Yeah. So we hope that you will join us for those adventures too. And if you like this video, found it useful, please do remember to give it a thumbs up and drop us a comment. We love hearing from you all. Subscribe if you haven't already. That would really help our channel. Always appreciate it. Yeah, until the next one. See everybody. Bye. Mama, Papa.